John, we saw the Blue Jays just score 17 runs on their seven-game road trip. Remarkably, though, they go 4-3, and three, a winning record, despite the bats really cooling off. And we see you know, the, the bottom of the lineup really cool down. Justin Smokes really struggling mightily at the dish. Uh, Michael Saunders as well is at a big skid. Darwin Barney kind of turning back into to, to Darwin Barney. And David and I were talking about this earlier because last season for the Jays during their playoff run, they had the, the Smoke-Bello combination at first base right. with, with Justin Smoke and Chris Colabello, who was playing out of his mind is there a lefty power bat out there during this waiver trade deadline that expires on the 31st that maybe the blue jays and mark shapiro and ross atkins can investigate what's a name out there that the blue jays potentially might want to explore to to play first base down the stretch here how about adam lind (laughs) <laughs> because when you look at it, George, that, that's basically what you're talking about. I mean, Lind will likely clear trade waivers because uh, his contract, I think, is just big enough that there would be a little bit of reluctance to, to claim him on the, on the part of clubs. Uh, do I think the Jays are serious about Lind? No, I don't. Uh, I could always be surprised, but I, I would say it's very unlikely, um, just because just because of how long he was with Toronto to begin with, and, and it wasn't that long ago that they sort of moved on from him. So I, I would that would surprise me. But again, that's the type of guy that's probably going to clear waivers, and there are not a lot of them out there. You know, it's interesting. Brian McCann. Of course, he has clear trade waivers reportedly, um, and, and he could catch. He could play some first base. He could potentially DH a little bit. You know, he's act, it's an in division trade, and, and it's the Yankees. So I, I would really doubt that. But he's he's an interesting name because he, on some levels he does fit what the Jays would want, and, and to sort of balance things out. But your larger point is spot on. That's a position where they were getting a lot of. Uh, a lot of production last year. There was effectively, I remember talking to guys last year, that was basically a, like a 30 homer bat between the two of them. It was a, it was like a 30 homer tandem, and uh, and clearly now that's not what the, the that's not the production they're getting. Even Jose Bautista hasn't been quite the same since coming back from the injury, and he's batting second. Although I will say this, I think it's a very very good sign for the Jays long term uh, what Devin Travis has done for them. I think he has been a, a really really nice fit in the leadoff spot. He's come back. I think that you looked at the extent of his injury last winter time, and I know I was worried about if he was going to be able to reclaim what he had done you know, in the first part of 2015. And I think he's been as advertised or even better. I think he's just been a really, really nice leadoff hitter who I think is going to have a lot of success there. And a guy that I think guys really – fits nicely for them in the future, too. So I think that was a really, really well-done trade by Alex. Certainly, I think the Jays uh, have, have won that trade. Uh, for Anthony Gosu, of course, is still in the minor leagues with the Tigers. Uh, and, and wouldn't it be interesting if, if that would be the, the wild-card game matchup, which I believe is the case right now, uh, Toronto against Detroit. And, and certainly we would see two recent trades, uh, two fairly prominent ones in the last couple of years, uh, sort of playing out on the field, potentially, uh, at least in, in the way that those rosters look right now.